Good morning. Yeah, it's so awesome. Uh, this is, uh, let's just give the Lord honor and praise for just meeting with us here today. Man. Man, this week's Torah portion is from Exodus 35, 1 through 40, 38. And this section is all about building the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Uh, this is the portable structure where God's presence dwelled and where Moses would go in and meet with the Lord. The place where God's glory descended to, coming from unapproachable fire and smoke high up on Mount Sinai, uh, where it descended down to ground level, right into the midst of the, this bustling camp of former slaves, uh, right at ground level, the place literally where heaven touched earth. Um, <clears throat> and as you know, the physical tent of meeting itself was only temporary. It is now long gone. But I believe this passage speaks very clearly to us as Christians today, how we can uh, live in these physical tents of our bodies, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5. Um, I believe it presents a pattern for how we can build a life that is filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, just like the tent of meeting. A life where heaven touches earth and changes us and everyone around us. So I, there's uh, three main things involved in building of the tent that I saw, and they all start with the letter T. So it's really easy to remember, time, talent, and treasure. So the first one is time. In uh, the second verse, at uh, Exodus 35, it says, For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day, a day of Sabbath rest to the Lord. So this is a holy day, a holiday, if you will a weekly day off from work to focus on the Lord. And for the entire Israelite community, uh, building and maintaining this tent is going to require a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work. And uh, thinking about it, it makes a whole lot of sense to talk about this at the beginning, to reiterate up front that they get a day off, uh, to really remember the reason why they were, are working and for who they are working for. I've heard it said that another word for love is time. It takes spending a great deal of time with someone to build a relationship with them built on love and trust. And we all have a very finite amount of time in our lives, and it's, it's a commodity we can't get any more of. So spending time with someone is literally investing your life into that person, your most precious commodity. So I was just thinking about how much time do I, how much time do we spend daily with the Lord? talking to him in prayer, uh, just worshiping him, thanking him for his blessings, confessing our failures, meditating on his instructions, asking for his wisdom, receiving his peace and power. We cannot love him if we don't spend time with him. And not just on the, not just on the day of rest, but ask him to redeem the other days too when we're working, when we're going about our daily activities. Pray that God would use both our time resting and our time working for his purposes. So the first is time. The second is talent. In verse 10 of Exodus 35, it says, all who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. So the Lord asked the Israelites to use their talents for his glory. It's the same for us today. We can use our talents and abilities to glorify God in our regular daily work. In building this tent of meeting, God needed construction workers, craftsmen, project managers, designers, seamstresses, artists, engravers, perfumers, and the list goes on. And there were many different types of skills needed to build this tent, uh, and many different types of skills made up of this body here today, and they were all necessary. And today we tend to think that some jobs are better than others, they're more holier, but we can glorify God with our talents, whatever they are, because, you know why? Because God is the one who placed that talent in us in the first place. Amen. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So time, we have talent, and the third is treasure. In verse 5 in Exodus 35, it says, From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring an offering to the Lord. So here we see the offering of our treasure is from what we have, not from what we don't have. 
The Lord meets us where we are, and he is not limited by our finite resources. Remember the story of the widow's might? Remember the loaves and the fishes? And we see God desires a willing heart. It says, everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord. As it says also in 2 Corinthians, each should give according to what he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, To be sure, these weren't basic things that the Israelites gave in this passage. They were valuable things like gold and silver, precious metals, fine clothes, leather, wood, incense, gemstones. Ultimately, this teaches us that treasure is something that is precious. It will cost us something to give give it to the Lord. It will cost us our very best. But he is worth it, amen? Amen. Amen. And it all comes from him anyway. Everything we have is from him. And he is worth it. And just like the Israelites gave willingly and in abundance, when we give our very best to the Lord, he multiplies it and inhabits it and makes it so much more than we could ever be on its own. So uh, wrapping up here, time, talent, treasure. It says in Exodus 39, 42, the Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And we see once the tent of meeting, okay, and we see once the tent of meeting and everything inside was uh, completed, that it was anointed and made holy and set apart. And the covenant law was placed in the ark in the middle of the tent. The lamps were lit, the altar made ready, and all the preparations were made for the Lord to inhabit it. And what happened? Exodus 40, 34 through 35 says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Just get excited reading about that. Uh, As a radical follower of Christ in 2021, don't we want the exact same thing in our lives today? To be anointed and set apart for God's purposes? For his word of truth to be engraved on the tablet of our hearts? And for his spirit to burn inside of us and fill us up so completely that none of our flesh can enter in? Amen? Gets me so excited thinking about that. We want to walk each day with the sweet presence of his Holy Spirit visible on our countenance, just as it was on Moses, to be an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven and a beacon of hope and light to a lost world. Amen. I want all that. (laughs) Amen. So today, uh, March 13th, 2021, uh, in closing, will you join with me and commit to give the Lord your time your talent, and your treasure. In doing so, make your life a place where he is welcomed. Yeah? Amen, amen. So he only asks us to give what we have. And he is a good, good father. He is patiently waiting for us and wants so much to meet with us, not just today, not just when we are feeling spiritual, but every day of the week. In our normal everyday activities, he wants to do so much in and through us. And the best part is he has promised never to leave us. It says, and all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. So time, talent, treasure. Let's make our lives and our communities and this community a place where the God's presence richly dwells. Amen. 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 Thank you.